Thanks for staying with us. Are leaders born or made? Are certain people born with characteristics that make them perfectly suited to guide and inspire? Or do they gain these characteristics through life experiences and delicate guidance? And most importantly, where do these noble leaders lose their way? The quote of the day states that a bad system will beat a good person every time. So it's high time that we begin to ask the questions of whether people are corrupting the system or the system is corrupting its people. And if this is the latter, what does it mean for us as future leaders? Now, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. And follow us on all our social media platforms. So you guys heard that really cool line I said about the <laughs> quote, right? Yeah. Is the system corrupting us or are oh, we corrupting? <laughs> I mean, it comes to the fact of nature versus nurture, you know. Mm. So are we being born with those corruptive personalities or is it the environment that we're being raised up in? Is that what's making us um, corruptive? You know, that word is thrown around a lot. In this Nigeria. Hey! <laughs> One day you hear, oh, our government is corrupt. The second day, oh, you hear, this person is corrupt, that person is corrupt. Mm. So we really need to find out what that word corrupt really means yeah. yeah yeah um i think also just seeing how used to corruption we are as a country as you mentioned before maybe that in itself is what makes the system so corrupt mm. expecting the system to be corrupt is what makes you think yes. that okay i'm going in here and maybe if i do the bare minimum and i only take a, a little bit of breath mm. then i'm you know doing better than the regular politician mm -hmm. and you know my mom also speaks a lot about values yeah. and how you need to maintain your values uphold your values and go to a position of power and influence rather than be influenced mm. so how do you think that you can make those values strong enough and you know maintain your own sense of individuality you know to the point where you are making a positive impact and not just following the regular status quo of being a corrupt politician or a corrupt leader yeah. This thing is, is deep. <laughs> it's really deep because whether we choose to admit it or not, all of us, like you said, is Nigeria. There is this gene inside of us that kind of just dictates that, okay, whenever we're presented with that opportunity to take advantage of a situation mm. because of the survival mindset that we've kind of grown up in, 100%. we try to always take that opportunity to just take advantage of someone, like any little thing you can do to get mm -hmm. by. Like on the road, oh, Jesus. <laughs> no, Jesus. actually, that's it real. It might not look like it relates now, but then trust me, as you're going back home from sets today, just watch. This is, is it, it doesn't even have to be rush hour, that's the funny part. Mm. You could be going on until like 12 midnight, and then just like you and a couple other cars on the road, and then there's a red light that's about, to, sorry, there's a green light that's about to turn red. Just because someone cannot wait 10 seconds for that red light to turn back to green, they're zooming past. Mm. And then in that wake of extreme adrenaline, that's when accidents happen. Definitely. And then people try to like say that, okay, it's not my fault. I don't have to take responsibility for this because my circumstances were different. Everybody's circumstances are, are different. different. So if we mm. do not decide now as people that whatever the situation is, however bad, the country gets however high the foreign exchange rate goes we are not going to be corrupt and there's no other way we can fix it yeah 100 uh, percent. like definitely if we um circle back to if it's the environment that you're raised up in that mm -hmm. makes you corrupt now what affects your environment your influencers, mm. your role models, those people that are around, your neighbors, the <laughs> person downstairs. Yeah. Like everybody has an impact on mm. how you're growing, how you're living your life, the environment that you're in. Yeah. So if you are raised up in a house where your dad is corrupt, your grandfather is corrupt, your uncle is corrupt, your father's father is corrupt, obviously one would now say, that person will grow up to become corrupt, mm. you know. Yeah. But if that individual is now taken away from that environment, based up in a good moral household with people who have good values, does that person now mirror the environment that they've been placed in or they go back to um, their, own, their, yeah. yes, yeah, their yeah. personality mm. that they were born in their natural ways? Yeah. 100%. Ziz, do you have anything to add for us? I have a more empathetic approach towards this topic. I'm looking at it from a macro level and then a systemic level as well. Because if you are operating in a system 
does not reward mercy and rewards corruption, then I see why people on the individual level on a micro scale will be more likely to lean towards being corrupt because the foundation is set upon greed, dishonesty, corruption, then why would anyone want to toil and work hard and labor hard solely based on principle? If principalism was to pay the bills or allow any sort of upward mobility. So that's why I have a more empathetic approach. As much as I'd like to be idealistic and say that we should all not be corrupt. I mean obviously that's what you know I that's what I suppose I think we need to look at the more structural as well and work on making government the legislature and who and also in our country to be left set up to now focus on you know and more I 100% agree with that. And like, since you spoke about the empathetic approach, I really resonate with that one because let's even just dive back to like primary school and secondary school since this is a teen's takeover, right? <laughs> you know, it's even like award ceremonies and you know, you see this person getting awards every single time because their parents are extra nice to the teachers. <laughs> and it starts <laughs> from these... <laughs> Okay, no, not, not for that that's what I'm saying. It's different if you're getting it like it's different if it's some kind of like meritocracy, or yeah. but then like if it's actually like just your parents coming and being extra nice teachers, or your parents just bringing like these fabrics and being like, oh, you know, just a little something. Yeah. People don't realize, but this is how it started. So then, when you are in a society that rewards corruption, then how else are you actually going yeah, to too. want to do anything yeah. otherwise? That's why we have to take our educational system accountable. Like, schools can definitely help younger people to learn how to be a greater person. <laughs> like, there's no way that every school has um, a merit uh, rule, rule book or anything. Yeah. So you get awarded for doing good things and you get punished for doing bad exactly. things. So why is it that if we're really implementing these rules, why are people coming out of secondary school and behaving exactly like our leaders 100% what you were saying about the educational system I actually have something that I would like to add to that mm. when we hear education because of the situation that all of us have grown up in right the Gen Z as we like to call it first thing that comes to our head is what school right because education has been associated with the formal aspect of it and we've completely neglected the informal aspect of it mm. the problem with this now is the fact that if you check every single teenager's phone or tablets or whatever device they use, a couple of these apps are most likely to be found on there. TikTok, number one, Instagram, number two, Snapchat, <laughs> number three. And then on all of these apps, like you said before, mm, influencers. influencers. So we have completely neglected the fact that those influencers actually have so much to add in terms of their educational value to these people. Mm -hmm. And what is so sad is the fact that these people that created these platforms, right, the owners of the TikTok, of the Facebook, of the yeah. uh, Instagram, of the whatever, there is no direct sort of um, verifying mechanism that they can use to determine whether or not this thing is wholesome for a child to mm. consume. So it's like when people, wow, every single day, I'm guilty. I admit. <laughs> every single day, I set an alarm for myself because I thought that I could escape it. I thought I could break the yeah. matrix. But then I'll start scrolling, and before I know it, you have hit your one hour daily limit on TikTok. <laughs> Press this passcode to continue. Oh, one yeah. hour scrolling doing what? <laughs> I'm lucky because my for you page is filled with things that were actually mind. teaching yeah. me. Because like I'm trying to prepare for university. So my for you page is telling me um, <laughs> how to get ready for college and all of that. But then not every teenager's for you page is like that. Yeah, definitely. And then all of those things are educating them and teaching them more about the world they live in. So if mm. they are living if they're living in that virtual reality or that virtual version of reality. And then they're now supposed to be held accountable for whether or not they develop values that will prevent them from being corrupt. Mm. How does that even work in the first place? Yeah, like going back to what we were saying, like anyone that holds a phone in front of their face, they're an influencer. No, automatically. The moment I we, my phone, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you just turn your Hey head guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I can take this yeah. drink now and just like post it, and then if it gets enough likes or so enough for comments or whatever automatically yeah. I'm important. Exactly. For posting a drink. <laughs> and like it doesn't matter. You could do 
I want to say the stupidest things on your phone on camera, and if it gains enough traction, everyone is now doing it. Everyone is doing it. So you can control the narrative from the most absurd of point, like uh, absurd of perspectives, mm. none of which are even geared towards trying to help our country get out of the mess that it's in currently. So it's recognize tough. your platform, recognize the power that you hold yeah. as an influencer. And the that they have yeah. in our minds. Because you have such a big platform to enable children, people that are watching you, to yeah. make them grow, to make them like the best versions of themselves. And some people are misusing that platform that they're on. And it's yeah. something that people need to get account like they need to get account to yeah. yeah. I'd like to I'd like to read a message. Um, you see, this is why I love you guys. Um, this message says, Good evening, my name is Somi. Hi, Somi. <laughs> I believe the system breeds corruption, and then we may choose to be better or to have integrity, but the system doesn't give you a chance. To, I love that. The Thank system you, doesn't Sony. give you a chance to survive. Yeah. The system has to work for the people, and that's the only way we'll be able to be held accountable. God bless you for this. But do you see the loop? Now, because it's like the system is corrupting its people, but we corrupted, the, corrupted the system. The system. Exactly. So now, for the people to stop being corrupted, we need to like make the system less corrupt. So it's still in our hands, no matter how much we try and like relieve so, the blame. Yes, mm -hmm. you at can't the end really of pass the, day. the blame to anyone else. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I think that's even the reason why we are the ones doing this. Because you know, first of all, Nigeria is bottom heavy. If you yeah. check the statistics, I think it's about twenty. How many percent of people that's like over forty percent of people that are Nigerians? Are below the age of 25 mm -hmm. so it's like when you have that many people in that age demographic you have to start teaching them these things from young mm. so I guess that's why we are the ones doing this because they won't hear it from people like my mom and our friends <laughs> exactly. so I'd love for us to answer the question once and for all is corruption born or bred after this short break that we're about to take see you shortly if you are just tuned in, we are discussing the feasibility of molding moral leaders and whether corruption is born or bred. Remember, you can join the conversation by sending us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. And because it's a special, the phone line is going to be open all week. So you can call us on 70 7749 If you call, please remember to turn down the volume of the device so we don't get any feedback. Ziz, are you there? I'm here. Yeah, so we'd love to hear <laughs> your two cents of what we're talking about before the break. Yeah. So I was especially interested in what Alpha was saying in relation to Gen Z and our role in all this. My take on Gen Z in relation to corruption and how the onus is partly on us to correct a system that doesn't benefit us is the fact that Gen Z and just a lot of generations in Nigeria from birth we've sort of almost this ideal of success being attainable through hard work. They say go to school, see, get a degree, work hard, and then you're then going to be able to achieve some sort of upward mobility or some sort of success. But the sad reality is that work ethic and getting all the qualifications still doesn't guarantee you any sort of success, especially in this country. For example, you will be like a graduate. You, people have graduate degrees and are still working as cashiers or other jobs that are considered on skilled labor. So I think if somebody has, if somebody goes to university, you know they get they get that degree. They're looking for a job because the job market right now is really really tough out here, even for people who are uh, qualified for the jobs, why wouldn't they then go and do Yahoo or 419 as we call it? Because they are doing everything right in the system, but the system is not right, so how are they meant to operate within that system? And, and even if they want to operate from a basis of principle, principle isn't going to pay their bills, integrity is not going to put like, food on their table. And then so it's all about making sure that there are ethical ways for people to be able to take care of themselves yeah. so we can now start focusing on individual integrity. Because a lot of people would love to, you know, make money in legal, respectable ways. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of people will enter fields looking to be doctors, nurses. But if you go through like eight years of school and then as a doctor, then you're earning minimum wage in like a government hospital. 
then also people feel let down by things like that. And in relation to Gen Z, to use like a more like longer example, if you're in, a, in an examination and for some reason the result is just very strict, if everyone around you discuss answers, and I mean like a complete free for all, everybody is just talking, exchanging answers, mm. but you're not going to want to write a paper by yourself and then now possibly get a lower score than everybody else who is conversing around you. Because those people who are around you, they're going to like likely get higher scores so they're like, you know, discussing the answers together yeah. and they'll probably get higher grades. And then even though you want to choose integrity, um, you still may feel a bit conflicted because other people are going to perform better than you and nothing is likely going to happen to them. At the end of the day, you may have chosen integrity, but on your report card, then I'm going to say, oh, she failed her exam, but at least she was honest. So just say she failed her exam. So I think that's like another example that will be more relevant to younger audiences. Yeah, I sincerely, I agree with you, Esme, like completely. And then even to add to that, my dad just sent me a message. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, everything begins with the seed. Even corruption was once a seed. Someone planted it and someone nurtured it. So mm. I'm going to focus on the aspects of nurturing in the sense that I'm going to dial it back in terms of age and take it all the way to the beginning when you're young. So you guys know, we're just graduated like from secondary school and all of that, you're an ALA. And then for people like us, we're trying to like see how the future is going to work out for us. We're trying to, all of us want to make money, we want to share money, <laughs> yeah. to make it in life and all of that. And then what is was saying about finding ethical ways to actually be able to sustain yourself and make a good living. The problem is that in Nigeria, there is this complex. I'm not sure if you have noticed it, that the youth is not like maybe psychologically or mentally or academically capable of actually starting professional things on their own. Mm. Let me give you an instance. There was a time I was on the um, Third Mainland Bridge, and then I and my dad were just driving, just me and him. And then I dressed well because why wouldn't I dress well? And then <laughs> Good. I. I it was, it was, and then we got stopped over, right, mm -hmm. by one of these road safety guys. And this guy nudged me with his gun and told me to like, get out of the car. And oh. in my head, I was like, what is going on? <laughs> they, apparently, when they asked me some questions about my name, what was my school, and because they knew my school and because of my school's reputation, they like, yeah. let me and him go. So let's open the trunk of the car, search us, and we were just, just two guys in the car. And then apparently, what? What, my dad thought, what my dad explained to me was that what these guys usually think is that when they see someone that looks like me in this youth category, right, yeah. and they are just like in a car by themselves, they thought that he was the Uber driver and I was a Yahoo boy because maybe huh. I. Mm, no. <laughs> because the way you were dressed. And yeah. then I now went ahead and thought about it. If I had just by mistake, let's say I wanted to do work that day and carry my laptop, oh. yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. game, I would have been taken to the station. So it's like. When there is that kind of stereotype that people like us can't do anything until we're growing white beard, yeah. how do you not expect us to even try to give the ethical way, the benefits of a doubt exactly. in the first place? That's why most of us, okay, now, you're finding different influencing as the number one way. But then there's still all the Yahoo, uh, the phone, and the, you know, no. Mm. So <laughs> everybody is like trying to go towards those other ways because, first of all, not just the fact that there are no opportunities in the professional sectors. But then because there is so much, there's so much stereotype in Nigeria, like there is, like the judgment is just too much. Yeah. How are you supposed to make it if you're this young and you actually have big dreams but then you're living in a situation like this? Yeah, because mm. especially at our age, we're looked down upon a lot. Let's say I have an idea, like, oh, I want to start a business in yes. baking or something, you know, a sector that's not really looked um, towards. Yes. A lot of the elders would be like, ah, why do you want to do baking? Go and finish go, your go, school. Go, <laughs> go, 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 and, go, go and do basic, go and do engineering. Mm. Go and when you finish school, today. you cannot Which is absolutely that. insane. Because we've thought, we, we, we as a community we think oh we've passed that yeah no, no, everybody's still saying that, that. that's medicine. what we think but that's yeah. it's, it's still it's, there it's still very much it's around still us there. so it's very it's very discouraging so as once you hear one person say oh you can't do that another person say oh you can't do that then it now mm. becomes the thing of okay fine everyone has told me i can't do this uh, so, I mean, exactly. and then still <laughs> and then the thing is that like we live in such a 
glamorous society. When you look at Nigerians, Nigerians know how to enjoy life. Yeah. I feel like that's just like it's generally so known. Bad. If you see the weddings, um, you see the old one bears. Let's just make it obvious. So it's like everybody is telling you, get up, make moves, you know, get some money, buy a new car. Mm -hmm. And then all you want to do is get money quick. Nobody is like nobody really cares about how ethical you are or yeah. nobody like I feel like Morality just isn't rewarded, like Isni said before. Morality just isn't rewarded in Nigeria yeah. anymore. Yeah. Or like, you know, you you understand what yeah. I mean. Yeah. So it's like nobody is really looking at, you know, getting money through helping people or getting money through doing something extremely productive, yeah. you know. And that's just really just it's breeding just, more corruption. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Any calls? Yeah, so I have a comment for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so refreshing to see young people sharing very insightful perspectives. Great job. Thank you. Um, I'm not really sure who said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unknown number. But we're really grateful. Yeah, so it's just bringing out the Gen Z and allowing us to speak on things like this. So circling back to corruption and stuff, you were saying that um, we'll have the people blaming the system, the system blaming the people. Mm -hmm. But you also have to understand, like, if we have a figurehead, a spokesperson that we're always blaming, or like, let's say, for example, Yasmin is leading some, Yasmin is mm -hmm. corrupt, Yasmin is this, Yasmin is mm -hmm. that. But then you also have to look at uh, the people around Yasmin. They're probably the ones making the moves, they're doing the tactics, they're doing everything. Yet Yasmin's the one who sits in front of the camera and says, uh, Hi guys, this is what I've been told to say. Yeah. 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 So it's really how we're going to educate and change the narrative around the people around us. That's why it's very important. My mom always tells me, You have to choose your friends. Like, look at your friends, and mm. you know who I am. Mm. So, so yeah. definitely. Yeah. I think I actually agree with that because, mm. you know. Is there can be a situation, and let's say uh, a policeman right stops you on the road, and then the guy is asking you for that something for the boys. And <laughs> after you finish giving him whatever something you're able to give him, you're then muttering in your car as you're driving off, complaining about how Tinubu is not doing anything. But then Tinubu know that that's policeman exactly. The system is so um, layered that if we actually do not deconstruct it first before we start putting blame on someone that's at the top. We're really not doing anything. Exactly. And it starts from a very nuclear level, starting with instilling positive values within your families. And then, like, we also came and related it to school, everything. Everybody thinks that when we talk about the system corrupting people, we're talking about just political systems and, like, yeah. oh, I'm a good man, I'm coming to be president, and then all of a sudden I'm corrupt. That's yeah. just it's not how it works. Because like that. that's why you see a lot of, um, especially our parents' generation, sending their kids out. There's mm. no way that one wants to build their children up in Nigeria because of the education system we're well known for. Exactly. Like, there's, you're here um, instilling bad values in children, even though you don't want to. We're aware that um, teacher salaries are not the best, but that does not mean that you should now um, make another child suffer because yeah. of your losses. Do you understand? So there's no way because you have... You should bring up that child to be able to come back and lead our country so that you can get a better salary. Mm. It's not because you, you're having a bad salary that you're not going to make this ch um, person suffer. Because yes. yeah. mm. yeah. all of it just goes to show that circumstance is a very vital factor that has to like, play in all of this. Yeah. Because if we want to... There was this book I was reading here. Yeah? The book is called Outliers by Malcolm, Malcolm Gladwell, I think. Yeah. And then essentially in the book, all it's saying is that for you to be a successful person, it's not really about how talented you are. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not even about how much dedication and hard work you've put into it. Mm -hmm. There is that vital factor of circumstance. If you ask Bill Gates now how he built everything that he has built, how he got the name that he has today, he will tell you that he was just the luckiest person in the world. Mm -hmm. And to be very honest, he was because all of the things, all of the situations that unfolded in his lifetime were unique to a very specific set of people. Within that Bill Gates timeline, where he was, uh, where he was born, mm. people like Steve Jobs, Bill Joy, Steve mm. Wozniak were born mm. within that same period because the, the Ameri exactly yeah. the American economy provided certain opportunities for them at that particular point in time. So if you try to just blame it on the fact that you're not willing to work or you're not willing to put in the efforts to achieve what you want in terms of canceling out corruption, then you'll be wrong because the circumstance that we... Like, for example, three of us now, mm. Right? The reason why we are able to have this conversation sitting down here today is because, first of all, we've been friends since, like, how old? <laughs> <laughs> and then, 
it's like first we have that kind of relationship with ourselves mm. we have that connection and our parents also have like they did right to morally guide us to be able to Definitely. speak in front of you guys today so it's really just a factor of everything everything in general circumstances so just you know. to simplify mm. everything let's just answer this question is corruption born or bred what i, I, I truly think direct answer direct, direct answer <laughs> i think it is bred i think it is bred. i, I feel like bread that's bread. where the fingers because, are pointing yeah there's because as we were saying how if you grew up in a corrupt household and you're taken away mm -hmm. like that person that's taken away and they've never experienced corruption they've never seen it they've never seen it on tv influencers all that type of thing and they grow up in a good value home that person is going to be a great person mm -hmm. studies have shown like in psychology nature versus nurture twins were studied one was put in a bad home and the other was put yeah, in I a good home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the person that was put in a good home, they grew up to become, I think, um, a politician or something. And the person who was born um, in a bad home was a drug addict on the street. Yeah. Two twins from the same mother, same um, what's it called, circumstances that they were born in. So it's very clear and very obvious that like corruption, I want to say, is bred. All right. So I have a comment from Jaden. Oh. And the comment says, I think Nigerians of this current generation have adapted to the society and learned how to make a living for themselves, however that living may be. <laughs> we all know that we as Nigerians, we are hustlers, and in our own way, they are making a living for themselves. Mm -hmm. I believe this country as a whole has become a breeding ground for corruption as the righteous paths, paths to wealth are faced with many difficulties and challenges. Mm. Good work, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jaden. <laughs> that's, that's honestly just summing everything up really perfectly put. Yeah. And it has been, I think this one is directed at you. <laughs> Interesting conversation and great perspectives. You guys are vocal and exceptionally brilliant. Well done. The anchor is a natural. Thank you. <laughs> From MC. Thank you, MC. <laughs> um, okay, so now that we've answered the question, wait, is this? Is corruption born or bred? <laughs> this is just anything. Yeah, we need so, to hear. <laughs> My, okay. So to sum up, to sum up, I think I believe that corruption is definitely bred. I don't think anyone is born saying, you know what, I'm going to be a swindler. Like I don't think anybody is born with that sort of like innate personality trait. I think due to economic circumstances and maybe some prior biological predispositions, people may be pushed to now indulge in a system that rewards corruption. Mm. Because not only is Mars rewarded in Nigeria, it is barely <laughs> I think that's what really corruption is yeah. mm. So we have another two messages um, from Mr. Seydou Basharu. I like to mention the <laughs> social media influence on our young population. It should be used to swerve our young mind towards this positive mindset and realizing that when you add value, you're rewarded. Another one says, if you can't build it, if you can't earn it or work for it, only option is to get it is through corrupt ways, period. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's... And so, as sad as it may sound, that is the reality that yeah. we are facing. Yeah. But I do have a question yeah. again. Yeah. Um, to make this conversation more solution driven, yeah. since we have come to the conclusion that corruption is bred, does that automatically mean that you know people that have done very questionable things can just be like, you can't, it's, it's not my fault. It's like, listen, I've had a really tough life. Like, I'm allowed to do bad things because. That's the thing, you know. That question is a tough question. <laughs> it's a big one. A tough question because you know, like when we sort of understand that our circumstances the sad part is that this question applies to every single Nigerian that exists mm -hmm. let me explain how when you try to understand the circumstances around you you then realize that you have every right to absolve yourself of all blame that's what people have decided to do they have decided mm. to like just say okay fine this is not my fault it's the fault of the system and they forget that they are the system 100 <laughs> percent so there's, there's no there's no I was born in a bad home. Okay. That bad home that you thought you were born into, you were a part of. Yeah. So we have a caller right now. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Welcome. This is the youngest old man speaking live and direct to the Gen Zs. Oh. <laughs> the youngest so old man. So I think man. that's interesting. Yeah. That's really amazing. However, 
Um, the word if um, corruption is born or bred, you know that is a new language for you guys who, but uh, who have to fall in. We don't have options. Mm -hmm. As a youngest old man, some of your words are even hard for me to digest <laughs> because you come with some new slant that we don't we didn't grow with. But I swear that we have to survive because. I can remember at home, I used to see some of the texts and the other things the kids do, and I have to ask them, what's the meaning of this one? <laughs> you see, like, L-O-M-L, L-O-O-O, -O -O, something, 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 and yeah. you guys are too fast for our liking. <laughs> However, <clears throat> let me indulge into today's topic. Um, you see, just like the lady said that corruption is bread, I just have to believe, believe her, and I, I agree with her 100%. Because most parents, they do some things and they wouldn't do it in front of the little ones just to get a quick one and make things easy for them. Yeah. Even through the phone, their phone calls, you see somebody literally sitting down in the, in the, uh, in the living room and he will tell you, I'm on bike, I'm on my way, I'm almost there. Oh. That brings the idea that there's an easy way out. Yeah. And you see most parents, they go to the school, they pay for their kids to pass things, they, they pay for their kids to get some position. Mm. They even lobby. And these kids hear them talk about it with mom and mom and dad discuss about this. How we can make her him get this. Now they have that feeling that there's another way out. There was one exam that just happened. That exam, I told my daughter that look, you guys just just got your way free. Because you never read. You see somebody on TikTok on the day of exams. Oh. Because they believe that the parents must have done what they need to do for them. <laughs> so all these things are is 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 being bred on them. And when when we keep on coming up, when we keep on coming up like this, these kids come up like this, they want to look for other ways to make things easy. Mm. In our days it's not like this. Seriously, in our days it's not like this. I just hope that this generation will be able to survive what is coming ahead. Because you have to have money, you have to know somebody to survive in this country. And I don't really know if 60% of the Gen Z's have such opportunities. Because it's now a general collection. You understand me now? You have to know what to do. And even those that try to be holy, in the sense of holy, they'll see you like a Jew guy. This one never knows what's they happen. You know even Sabi had it, they take down. Why are you like this? And the person will just be looking like one alien. Because that is the order of the day. You got to do what everybody is doing to survive and exist. So I don't know, I pity, I pity this generation. You guys are in tough, you are in a tough one. But I hope God will see you guys too. But for me, it's bread. And I blame mostly the parents and the society in general because there's no enabling environment. Everything is corrupt. Everything. I'm sorry to say this. Even in the churches, people love people for positions. And these kids see them do it. They hear them do it. Because you think they don't hear, we parents, we think these kids don't hear our discussion. Seriously, they listen. Yeah. They listen seriously and they hear everything. So basically, I just hope um, you guys are your own child. So I'm your own. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Youngest old man from Lagos. Yeah. Going back to what you were saying, like to do anything in Nigeria, you have to know someone that knows someone that knows someone. someone. And that's knows everything. Someone. Traveling. Have you ever doing your passport? No, that's what I, I'm telling you. Uh, that that office. <laughs> listen, no, it's it actually. It is actually hell. And then you. <laughs> but then, like, you now have like this connection, and that then you now go to, you and that's like the only way life can even be remotely yeah. sensible for yes. you. But, like, again, in the sense of being solution-driven and not having, like, a defeatist mentality, yeah. how do we prevent people from using this as an excuse? Because my mom always says we shouldn't place ourselves in a position of effect. Yeah. And, you know, we should be causes of positive change. Yeah. So how do you guys propose that? You know, we can't prevent people from having parents that do bad things on the download. Really, really gone. How yeah. do we... Make think, more moral leaders. I think Aniola shares your point of view. She says, good conversation, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> this is Aniola. How do you think that we can reduce corruption in our society? So she's essentially asking more or less the same like, yeah. questions yeah. you're asking. And then, first of all, um, youngest man, youngest old man from mm, leaders. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you said that corruption is everywhere. I agree with you, sincerely speaking. But then if we are going to be solution-driven, we have to first understand that as the youth, 
we are the ones that are responsible for this. Yeah, we have to right? So it's mm. not a lost cause. Let's get it through our heads now. Because you may see it's this way because you have been born, you have been bred, and you have been you have suffered under the system. For us, we have been privileged to at least just be relatively new. So our minds are still sort of moldable. Mm. What we can do is that as we are here representing the Gen Z of our society, we should try to do more things like this. Try to talk to people and try to get the message out there that this thing is really not worth it. Mm -hmm. Because if you can do it from now, eventually we're going to become parents and grandparents. And then our children and our children's children will learn from us, whether you like it or not. Because they will be listening to those conversations that you said that they would... We, that we thought they won't be able to listen to naturally. So essentially, if we can get it right from now, mm -hmm. from this age, right now, then I think it's actually a problem that can genuinely be solved. Yeah, so we have to look back on how to change the narrative, how to hold ourselves accountable and everything like that. Like, we all have to be able to, sit, like, put stamp our foot down and say, okay, no, we're going to stop history from repeating itself we're going to become better people we're going to try and um say no when we are stopped by the policeman on the road or um what's it called you know all those type of things that come up and we just really have to say that we also have to go back to our educational system you know like are teachers there to earn a salary or are they there to impact a child's yes, life are they there yes. to change that person's life you yes. know yeah yeah. So Yasmin, I think you have a comment for us. Um, yes, it says, reduce corruption by forming a group that makes one another accountable, no matter how small, and mm. grow it. Accountable. Yeah. And I, I'm going to find a way to see if I could tie this to what you were mm -hmm. saying mm. about like teaching. Yes. Um, I recently founded a, or I started an initiative called Talent Speaks, mm -hmm. right? And then me, I wrote a book about talent when I was 10. So I've been obsessed with this thing like for a while <laughs> now. And then I've just like tried to at least bring out those hidden gifts and skills that people have and just try to help them to display it on stages like this. Yeah. So essentially what we are doing, if not for the fact that it was ways that organized it, I would have loved to be the one to come up with something like this. Mm -hmm. Essentially, if we can put more people like us on stages like this, yeah. automatically they will become accountable because yeah. they will now be responsible for their own growth and yeah. success yes. as a person Definitely. from as young as they are. So once you begin to do that, the idea of corruption isn't even remotely close to them in their head because they realize that they're giving a shot at something truly great. Mm. It's not everybody that wants to be that young boy. Mm. They're only that young boy because there is truly no, no other, other option. option. Yeah. So if we are creating options for them through this and through platforms like Talent Speaks, like Waze and many of us, mm. we will be able to change that narrative. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Ziz, what are you saying? How do we stop corruption? <laughs> Okay, so I definitely agree that definitely with the corruption is corruption just seems to be ever present and very ubiquitous. But I think that primarily, I think honestly, it needs to start with legislation because as much as us as individuals want to try and make a change for ourselves, there's a lot of people who are in less, let me say, sustainable or privileged conditions, wherein. Being honest is not even like a viable living choice. It's either like you be corrupt or you don't eat. So I think that um, in terms of, I think we start from the top. I think we start from legislation. As you guys were talking about, you know, checks and balances. I think that's a very important first step. Because, for example, we'll talk about us not wanting to bribe policemen and things of that nature. But when you now think about the way that the government handled um, corruption between the, corruption within the SARS police force. That's kind of disheartening because we all know that corruption was going on within you know the SARS police office team. However, we all believe that the government handled that okay. satisfactorily. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm so sorry that we couldn't take some calls, but before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram and Spotify as Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. A bad system will beat a good person every time. Every time. See you again tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Bye. Bye.